October 14, 2019. At approximately 3.21 p.m., after being unable to reach her the whole night before, the manager entered her room in Sungnam, South Korea. As they entered the second floor, there they found her body. It was a death that shook an industry, a death that rocked an entire nation. Cha Jin Rae, better known as Suli, lead rapper and visual of the K-pop group FX. She was known as the star with the million dollar smile. Suli was just a young girl, a fourth grader in elementary school when she was officially cast as a trainee for SM Entertainment, one of the four biggest entertainment agencies in Korea. At the age of 11, she was cast in her first drama. In September 5th of 2009, at the young age of 15, she debuted with the group FX, and on August 2015, after a successful six years, Suli had left the group. SM stated Suli was suffering physically and mentally from malicious and untrue rumors spreading about her. Ever since early in her career, she had been the target of criticism and bullying from Korean netizens, also known as Knet. Suli had always been open about topics of sexuality, feminism, and mental illness. She was an individual who went against the norm. She didn't play by the established rules of society, and she refused to be placed in society's cookie-cutter image of a K-pop idol. And for that, she was crucified by both the media and the internet. She received hate for the most absurd things like going out in public without a bra, starring in a movie with a nude scene, speaking openly about women's rights, and even the act of simply posting a selfie of her and her boyfriend was met with controversy and criticism. On an episode of Night of Hate Comments, Soli responded to the ridiculous hate comments that she received from Knets. constantly bullied online, from being slut-shamed to Knets telling her to kill herself. And on October 14, 2019, she did just that. Sully had taken her life. In 2017, 15-year-old Kyla of the group Pristin became the target of online criticism. Many Knets insulted Kyla's weight and image and felt like Kyla did not fit the image of a typical K-pop idol, which was completely untrue. In October of 2017, Kyla had to take a hiatus. She stopped all group activities and remained inactive until their disbandment in 2019. The online media website Asian Junkie commented, It certainly seems like a 15-year-old girl got bullied out of her dream. In 2018, Jenny became the center stage for cyberbullying Knets. Multiple videos of Jenny surfaced online of her as Knets perceived being lazy and not giving any effort, which furthermore built upon a lot of critics' views of her being spoiled, ungrateful, and prideful. Additionally, any dating rumor of Jenny was taken as truth and was then humiliated simply for the fact that she went on a date. In 2005, K-pop idol Heo Yoon, otherwise known as Yoonhee, had undergone several different procedures for plastic surgery, including her jaw, nose, and breast enlargement. Immediately afterwards, she was met with criticism, people calling her fake, plastic, and oddly enough for being too sexy. In January 21st of 2007, emergence of social media came the ability to communicate with friends, relatives, and acquaintances 
It became easier to organize things, keep in contact with friends across the world, and remember people's birthdays. But it also gave birth to a new vile form of bullying. Because of the anonymity, people can say and act as they please without fear of immediate consequences. Within seconds, you could ruin another person's life and reputation, all with the click of a button. Didn't matter if it was true or not, people like to believe the juiciest story. So where does this big bullying problem stem from? To fix any problem, not only do you have to recognize that it is a problem, but you also need to know where it comes from. In a 2017 Korean study, it stated that school violence and cyberbullying occur due to inner motives such as ostentation of power, desire to govern or subdue others, revenge, boredom, jealousy, and transition of emotions. As stated earlier, young teens face a lot of social pressure, especially in academic settings. In order to deal with this pressure and other negative emotions, students will turn to physical bullying and cyberbullying to cope. The study continues by saying, victims of school violence tend to have cyberbullying inflicting behaviors to reduce their tension for school violence. So it seems that victims of school violence will also in turn inflict violence and bullying to others. It starts to create a vicious cycle of never-ending bullying. At school, students don't see their peers as friends, but as competition, and believe that they need to beat them to get ahead. Students who are good in their studies can immerse themselves in that. Those who are not might try to bully or control someone else. Some other contributing factors to bullying were jealousy and as the study called it, ostentation of power, or in layman's terms, the need to show off, the desire to be better than others. We live in a day and age dominated by social media. We are constantly exposed to people who are more beautiful, who have more money, nicer cars, and have seemingly perfect lives. People think that this will impress others and will earn the love and praise of others. When bombarded with everything that we see on the internet and social media, this desire to be better than others naturally turns into jealousy. And idols, whose lives are constantly under a magnifying glass, become the easy target for people's hate as an output for their jealousy and the pressures from academic life. I was able to speak with Gracie Grace, who spoke about her own struggles with bullying as an idol. I would have so much like negative comments and it was hard to like not look at them, but it just makes you want to look at it because it's, they're talking about you and sometimes neg negativity feeds off of negativity. It does get very depressing and you just feel like you, all your hard work wasn't even paid off just by people judging you on what you, they see on TV and they don't really know you in real life and you can't even explain all of that to like everyone so that's the most like uncomfortable thing you have to deal with and I think that happens because of internet because internet is so easy to be anonymous and just like comment really fast and you're basically commenting without really thinking and I don't think they would really do that if they were you know in front of the celebrity face to face Internet just makes it easy to be negative. 일단은 저희 사회가 다른 사람의 다른 점을 받아들이기 굉장히 힘들어하는 사회인 것 같아요. 어한 사람이 다른 행동을 했다 해서 그 행동에 대해서 어, 지적을 하거나 혹은 그 행동에 대해서 어, 비난을 하기 때문에 개개인이 자신의 그걸 자신의 생각을 표현하기가 너무 힘든 것 같아요. 근데 그게 잘못된 방향으로 흘러가서 온라인상에서 가장 표적이 되기 쉬운 연예인들을 공격하게 되는 현상인 것 같습니다. Obviously, bullying is a huge problem, a problem that desperately needs to be solved. No more people need to needlessly die. So what can we do? The easy cop-out answer is just to say, oh, be nice and kind to everyone. I don't think that's enough. If we truly want to see change and root out this epidemic, then we must take action and we must be proactive about it. The tone at the top needs to change from the people in power to the kids at school. There needs to be a change in culture. And I don't mean culture as in the language, arts, and history. I mean the habitual collective behavior of a group of people. Change in the belief that it's okay to torment people because we are angry or jealous. Or the idea that it's okay to take out your academic stress on people that are weak and powerless. Parents, teachers, and other students must take a zero tolerance policy to bullying. On October 15th, a bill referred to as the Soli Act was proposed to counter malicious comments. A bill supported by about 100 different organizations and more than 200 celebrities and K-pop idols who reportedly had experienced malicious comments themselves. The Korea Entertainment Management Association declared, we will no longer stand idly by 
and we will do our best to eradicate cyber violence and malicious commenters. Nothing will be forgiven, and strong action will be taken. Once again, we will be taking strong legal action on all fronts against malicious comments directed at pop culture business professionals and artists. The bill is expected to be brought to the National Assembly's Memorial Hall in early December. Ask ourselves this, do we hold grudges? Do we gossip? Do we make an effort to make people feel welcome? Or do we purposely exclude other people? Instead of being happy for others and their achievements, do we instead become envious and hateful? So we can ask for all the changes in legislature, changes in society, changes in other people. But at the end of the day, there's only one person that we have full control over. My plea to you is be the change that you want to see.